let's talk about one of the most common uh, aspects of video games, and that's collision detection, detecting whether two things collide. And it's pretty much one of the most important aspects, just because um, if you're building a game like a platformer, you need to know whether they're intersecting with the platforms, whether they can jump on, whether they bounce off of, uh, whether uh, players bounce off or hit enemies or anything like that, bullets. Um, anything in the world that is interactable needs to have some form of collision detection with it. You now sometimes that might be basic collision detection like whether you're clicking inside of an object or something like that. Or sometimes it might be much more complex of whether two boxes are colliding or whatnot. Now, um, and we're going to cover a number of different parts or types of collision detection and I'm going to mention a few that we're not going to cover in detail at this point uh, just because they're outside, they're a little bit outside of the scope of the course and um, they are pretty heavy duty in the math side of things so we're gonna skip for we're gonna skip a fair amount of them and I'll just mention them so if you do want to do the digging you can because um, depending on the game you're making it might be relevant at a later time so first one we're gonna talk about is one called um, let me just type it in here manually so the first one we're gonna talk about is point point to box collision detection So that means, does a point exist inside of a box, or touching the, or touching the uh, barrier around it? I'm also going to do something similar for that one. Uh, point to circle, and then after that, we're going to discuss uh, circle to circle. Think of it like a game of pool or billiards or whatever. Um, and then we're going to discuss uh, box to box in a separate chain of uh, video modules because that one is very. I want to go into a lot of depth on that one. Give a lot of examples, uh, just because it is probably the most widely used. Because pretty much everything you draw is drawn as uh, inside of a bounding rectangle. So box to box is going to. I'm going to give a lot of detail on that one. But the first three, I'm going to basically do in this video here, in a discussion. Then I'm going to follow them up with a demonstration video. Um, just to see how they actually work out. So what you need to know first of all is that collision detection is math. So if you don't like math, you're going to have to suck it up for a little bit. Um, some of it's pretty easy math, some of it can be a little bit more complex to wrap your head around, but it is math nonetheless. So um, all those times when you told your teacher, whoa, where am I ever going to use that in life? Well, here you go. Um, if you want to make games, you're going to use math. So uh, let's start off with the point to box collision detection. And where is my mouse? There it is. So point to box basically means, so number one, if we have a box, um, I don't like that. I don't want it rotated in any way because a rotated box is a completely different beast altogether. Let's say that we have what's called an axis aligned bounding box, which means a box that hasn't been rotated in any way, shape, or form. I want to know if I click somewhere, does that point exist inside the box? Okay, so we know the box is defined by an x and y coordinate. We also know that it has a width and it has a height. The point that we clicked on is defined by an x and y coordinate. So we need to know if the x coordinate of the point exists between this wall and this wall. If that's true, we also need to know if the y coordinate of the pointer of the point exists between the top wall and the bottom wall. If both of those things are true, you have a collision. So in basic pseudocode, you're going to say, let's assume that this is called like um, MX, like sorry, mouse, let's say this is the mouse pointer and this is a rectangle. So I'm going to say something like this. Now this isn't exact code, you can't copy and paste this into your program, this is be something that you have to apply to your, apply yourself, but basically speaking it's going to go something like this. If the mouse dot x is greater than or equal to the box dot x, which means the left side of the wall, so if this x is greater than this wall, great, and the mouse dot x is less than or equal to the box dot x plus the box dot width. So basically the box dot x is here. If we add on the width, we're on the right side of the box. Perfect. So if the mouse x is greater than the left side and less than the right side, 
You're inside the two left and right walls. Good. Now we have to duplicate what exactly what we did right here, but for the Y component. We gotta make sure that it's between the top wall and the bottom wall. So if mouse, oops. If uh, mouse dot Y, oh my goodness, is greater than or equal to box dot Y, and last but not least, thumb keeps hitting my clicker on my pointer here. Our mouse dot y is less than or equal to our box dot y plus box dot height. So that means is it greater than the y value, which is at the very top, and less than the y value plus the height, which is the very bottom. If all four of those things are true, return true. We have a collision. Otherwise, return false. I don't even need an else. I can just say return false because if it gets inside of this if statement, it ends immediately and it doesn't even go on with the rest of the program. So I can just have this return false on the outside. So that's great. So that's point to box collision detection. That's all there is to it. Nothing really weird there at all. So uh, point to circle collision detection is actually in no way similar, which is kind of surprising, but that's the way it is. So basically, for point to circle, it's it's like this. If we have a circle, oh, I wonder if the ink to shape thing will catch this. If we have a circle, doo -doo 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 -doo, not bad. And I click somewhere, let's say I click over here. A circle is defined by a center point and a radius. So it has an X and a Y, and it has a radius. And our point over here is defined by an X and a Y. Oops, that's not good, and a Y. So basically we need to know, does this point, I shouldn't be using an X there, I really shouldn't. Um, let me actually erase that because that's just gonna get confusing. Let's just have a point like that. Does this point exist inside of this circle? Well, we know it exists inside this circle if its distance from the center is less than the radius, which makes sense because that radius is around the whole circle. It's a perfect circle. So if that distance is less than the radius, the distance from, let's draw a little dotted line in blue here. If that distance is less than radius, then it is definitely inside the circle, less than or equal to radius, and we have a collision. So the same process applies, but now we have to calculate that distance first. Well, the distance is nothing more than Pythagorean theorem. We just use the triangle. We create a triangle, do, 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 do. Well, let me just draw a line. And then we have to draw a line up here. So our distance here is gonna use the x here, so this x minus that x, and this y minus that y. So let's write out our a, b, c, just so you, so there's our a, there's our b, and there's our c. Pythagorean the theorem says a squared plus b squared equals c squared. We just have to substitute our values. So basically we're saying a squared. Okay, well that's this value down here, a. So that's mouse x minus uh, circle x squared. So we have mouse dot x minus circle dot x. We're going to square that. We're going to add on to that the b value, which is mouse dot y minus circle dot y. and we're gonna square that. And that's equal to C squared. Well, what's C? Well, C is the distance. That's what we're trying to solve for. So we can rewrite that. I'm gonna try and rewrite that whole thing here and I'm gonna put distance on the left-hand side. So our distance squared is this whole thing. But we don't want distance squared, we want distance. So to get rid of the square, we have to take the square root of both sides. So uh, c squared, the square root of c squared is just c, so the square root of d squared, distance squared is just distance. But that means we have to take the square root of this piece too, so that's the whole thing is square root of this mess here. So we just have to rewrite this, mouse dot x minus, 
uh, circle dot x squared plus mouse dot y minus circle dot y squared. So if the distance is less than or equal to the uh, radius, we have a collision. So we return true. Otherwise, we return false. So you can see that they're very um, unique in the way that they handle these different things. Uh, they don't really, not really directly applied to one another. Oh, that was a terrible line. Um, this way, in this, when we're dealing with circles, we're almost always dealing with the distance between the center point and something. Uh, that's just the nature of it. So the next one I'm going to talk about before uh, we go on is circle to circle, which is actually much more similar to the uh, number two here, which is point to circle. 